All right, let's start by launching Terminal. Let's create a new directory where we're going to store the code for this demo application. Let's call it Azure Demo Pipelines. Let's change directory into that. See, there's nothing in there. We're going to use the .NET CLI to create a new MVC project. The command for that is fairly trivial. We do .NET new MVC. And if you're not familiar with the commands, there's nothing to worry about. The help switch lists out all the possible uh, commands and, and good examples of, uh, of that as well. So let's, let's look at this. Uh, we simply want to give the project a name. So minus N is what we need to use in this case. So .NET new MVC new, and let's call it my web. And this will basically take the MVC template, restore the dependencies for it, and create the folder uh, with that project uh, in it. Now we're going to initialize a new Git repository in there. So we're just going to run the command git init. Um, and what this would do is this would create a, a, a new Git repository. Now let's open this in code and, and see what the project structure looks like. So I could build a project. Um, and as I build the project, you would see that uh, when we flip into Visual Studio Code, that the number of uncommitted changes looks like 96. Uh, but if I clean this and I go back into Visual Studio Code, that number drops down to 60, which means there are project level dependencies that um, are being generated, which we shouldn't really have to commit into the code repository. Uh, this looks like a good use case for adding a git ignore file. Um, and a git ignore file is perfect. Now there's an extension available within Visual Studio Code which allows you to create a git ignore file and it's got pre-baked templates for it as well. Um, and I've just added a git ignore file for Visual Studio. Uh, and by doing that, it ignores all the .NET release and objects and, and debug folders. I'm just gonna extend that git ignore file and include Visual Studio uh, Code, um, you know, ignore element into it as well, uh, like the launch, launch file. Um, so if I build a project now, you'd see that the number of dependencies uh, that are yet to be committed does not change, which means we're not generating anything. Uh, well, we're still generating stuff, but it, we're not pushing it through. All right, so let's just run that uh, project that we've created. It's a blank project. There's nothing much into it. It's the default template. Um, and as we run it, we get two endpoints. We get the HTTPS endpoint. Uh, we can install the local certificates and use that, or we get the HTTP endpoint as well. So I'm just going to open up a new terminal window and copy that URL and simply uh, run the command open with that URL. And as I do that, it will get redirected into, into Chrome. I can see um, the, the web apps there. I can browse through it if I want to look at the pages. As I said, it's just default. There's not much into it. OK, let's close this and, and control C out of um, the running process. Now, if we go over into um, Visual Studio Code, we'll see we still have not committed the changes yet. So let's run the git commands to add pending changes. Uh, and now look at the status. It's, staying, it's saying the stages have been uh, staged. So let's run the commit command um, to push the changes into, into git repo. Um, now, you know our local branch master is completely up to date. We don't have any pending changes. Uh, let's open up uh, Azure DevOps. Um, if you don't have an account yet, you can create one. It's free to begin with. I've got an account already. Um, if you are coming in new, you could create a new project. You could choose whether the project is public or private. I already have a project created, um, so I'm simply going to go into the Git repo and create myself a new Git repo. Let's just call the Git repo my web. We don't need a readme file because we've we've already sort of initialized the Git repo locally. Now, we will come back into the, the scope of the Git repo that we were operating in. And if I run the command git remote minus v uh, to validate what remote repos I've set up, there's no response, which simply means that I don't have any reports con remotes configured against my Git repo. Now, Azure Dev DevOps does a good job on the landing page for the new Git repo, where you can see the commands that you need to run to associate a, a remote uh, if you haven't done so yet, uh, or 
uh, you know, if you're if you're coming in new into into Git, it's it's very useful to have the commands to hand. So I'm going to associate the remote. I'm using SSH, so that's why I'm going to associate the SSH endpoint. And then if I run git remote minus v, it lists out both the remote endpoints that have been configured. Now I'm simply going to run git push minus u all, which would push all the changes upstream. Now if I do a git status, it says you know we're aligned with the remote. So if I refresh the page, you see all my changes are up there. I can see them. Um, and and they're there, right? Now, the next step, which is what we want to cover really, is to create a pipeline. Now, we're going to use the Azure DevOps uh, pipelines as code, uh, which are also called the YAML pipelines. We're just going to create the new experience and use uh, a blank template. And, it, you know, whatever text you get in that template, it's, it's to help you, but let's just get rid of it all and start fresh. So one of the important things is to start by giving your pipeline a name. I'm simply giving it a myweb.ci name, and we'll come back later and cover all the detailed uh, macros and other elements you can use. I'm configuring this to trigger uh, as a CI against the master branch. Now, I don't have other branches. Again, this can be expanded to have um, you know, includes and excludes on branches, and we'll cover that later. I'm configuring this pipeline to run in the uh, in the Ubuntu pool. Uh, you see, I don't have to configure any agents because Azure DevOps provides hosted agents and we could just tap into that uh, for our starter pipeline. And again, if we needed to stand up our own uh, agents, we could do that and we'll cover that later. But for now, let's just focus on uh, the out of box uh, agent that we get, uh, the hosted agents. Okay, so we've got variables. I've setting up a variable. I've given it a name uh, instructor and I've given it a value, Tarun, which is my name. Uh, and let's just add one step in the pipeline, call it echo greetings uh, from your instructor. And I'm passing the name of the variable, which dynamically at runtime should get swapped out for the value of the variable. You know, the parentheses and the square brackets I'm adding is just um, for decoration. It's not a part of the syntax. Let's just give this step a name. Let's call it greetings. And at this point, we've got everything ready for a basic pipeline. Um, let's commit the changes. Uh, let's just call it Azure Pipeline Initialize and save and run. So as we run this and we click on it, um, you know, we can see the logs from the build pipeline execution in real time. Um, and we're seeing that the agent is being initialized. It's running on an Ubuntu uh, latest agent version. It's fairly quick to be allocated and it's fairly quick to run through our steps as well. It prints out the agent version that's being used. Um, it checks out the repo um, on the agent and, and uses it in a detached mode. Um, and there we go, right? It's printed out uh, my name as the instructor who's greeting you in this course. Um, and after, after it completes the pipeline execution, it clears and removes any credentials. Now come back to it. I also want to show you that you could run the same pipeline in a Windows uh, hosted pool. And just to prove that this is really cross-platform, uh, let's put in a PowerShell task, which traditionally has been known as you know, a very Windows-focused uh, command line tool. And in this case, we're going to use PowerShell and print out um, the, the environment variables, uh, actually the whole environment uh, level detail for the agent. So um, the get child item path env We'll print out any environment uh, and OS level details that are available. So let's let's run this. Uh, let's just save the changes, commit the changes. And because we've configured this against the master branch as CI, as we commit the changes to the pipeline, the pipeline runs right away. And we can see that the this time around, it's running on a Windows hosted agent. Um, the other steps, they're pretty much the same. Still does the greetings. And now it's printing um, the environment information. So let's have a look at that. If we search for the keyword OS, let's put a space after that. Um, we can see it's Windows NT and, and it's running on a Windows 2019 uh, image.
right, let's change this to run back in Ubuntu now. Your question would be, don't I need to change the PowerShell to a different um, shell scripting? You actually don't because what it would do is it would literally take um, this and handle the cross-platforms element of it and make sure that the agent, the hosted agent, the Ubuntu hosted agent being used has all the necessary plumbing in place to run that pipeline of yours. So let's click through and see what happens. Okay, so the print environment um, information is step is done. Let's go into it and see what, what we can see here. Um, OS, we see it successfully run the PowerShell in Ubuntu printed out that it's a Linux um, and what version of Linux it is. Now here's the real deal. Can this run on Mac OS? Yes, it can because Azure Pipeline provides you a hosted agent for Mac OS as well. Um, so let's just change the VM image type to Mac OS latest. And again, you know, look, we're running PowerShell here. We haven't had to change our pipeline. Let's just commit the changes and see what happens. So let's click through, and this is running on a Mac OS latest uh, image in the Azure hosted agents. So the print environment step, which is PowerShell, has successfully been executed. And let's check the OS. We see it's running on Darwin. Perfect. So, you know, other things we're showing off is we get the analytics on the branch where the pipeline has run, what the success rate is. Um, we could, um, let's download the latest changes into code. We can see uh, the Azure pipelines available in code. Uh, again, that's the benefit of having pipeline as, as code in, in YAML is we can operate on it uh, from within the editor. And there's an extension available, which is the Azure pipelines extension, which allows you to have IntelliSense and brings in a lot of other cool features um, within Visual Studio Code. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to quickly show you is if we go back into the Git uh, repo and we click on history, we can see all the changes that we've made and the results of the integrated build that ran along with it as well. Because, because all of this is still code, we can do code reviews, we can, we can tag people, leave comments. Um, and, and this is great because at the end of the day, pipelines are also a collaborative feature which the team puts together to build and test and run their product. And, and if you've got that within version control, there's so much more that you could do in terms of process around it. And just wanted to quickly show, show you that you've got, you know, all the status features when you add comments, whether they're fixed or they're not going to be fixed. So fosters that collaboration culture around it. Great. So that's really it. Hope you found this useful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.